The man performance, USA. The greatest entertainers in America as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command performance presented this week and every week till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Tonight we depart from our customary procedure on command performance and forsake comedy to dwell upon literature. From one of the great classics of the day, we present a mighty dramatization featuring stirring adventure, tender love, and the triumph of right over might. And what is the greatest example of classic literature of today? Superman! Tonight's cast includes the mad scientist, Dr. Bikini, portrayed by Bella Lugosi. His insane assistant professor at all, played by Sterling Holloway. The city editor, played by Wendell Niles. Oh, oh that's me. <laughs> and the King Sisters, played by the King Sisters. Our Superman's girlfriend, the beautiful girl reporter of the Daily Planet, Lois Lane. Who else could we get but that five-star final, that banner headline, that extra edition, Paulette Goddard? <laughs> and now, for the man who is the champion of the oppressed, guarding the fundamental rights of the people, man of a thousand steel muscles... Hey, what's that up there in the sky? It's a bird. It's a plane. Oh, it is not. It's Bob Hope. on the city room of the Daily Planet, the headquarters of Bob Hope, who's really Clark Kent, who's really Superman. There's tension in the air. Everyone is waiting for a big story to break. Then suddenly, there's a loud cry from Clark Kent. Stop the presses! Stop the presses! Stop them! Kent, what's breaking? My foot is caught in page six. <laughs> Say, I must be big news. My big toe got a two-page spread. <laughs> oh, Forget it, Chief. Look, I got some great news items for you. Let's see. Can't you want to ruin me? This item is from the Daily Bugle. Well, this one's from the Bugle. You stole this one from the Bugle. Oh, what's going to happen to the Daily Planet? I don't know. What's it say in the Bugle? <laughs> oh, you and you. Better not lose your temper. I just got an offer from the Bugle. <laughs> I got an offer from the Bugle. You I did? Think. Yes. They say if I kindly step outside, they'll beat my head on the pavement. <laughs> Kent, you're absolutely useless. On top of that, you're never around when I need you. Something happened today? Yeah, over at the auditorium, the policeman's show was going great guns till Bob Hope made a surprise appearance. Children screamed, women fainted, and 6,000 people were trampled in a mad rush for the exits. And where, may I ask, were you? I was home, listening to Red Skelton. <laughs> Kent, you're just not a reporter. Why can't you learn to stick your nose into other people's business? But I'm not that type. I just can't peek in other people's lives. It's rude, it's impolite, it's childish, and besides, they keep pulling down the shades. <laughs> Kent, as of now, you're transferred to the circulation department. Circulation department, yes, sir. Well, don't just stand there. Rub my legs. <laughs> How'd you get a laugh like that? <laughs> you must have a relative still in the service, huh? <laughs> well, me. never mind. <laughs> get out of my office. Yes, sir. Oh, the chief gets so mad. 
As plain Clark Kent, I have to pretend I'm a fool and a weakling. As Superman, I can drop the pretense. I'm a fine reporter with my super sensitive hearing. I can hear everything with my X-ray eyes. I can see everything. I can see through stone walls. Mm. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me. That's not the finish. <laughs> I can see through stone walls. Guess I'll drop by the YWCA again today. Clark Kent, I'm ashamed of you. I heard the chief ball you out. Now, Clark, why don't you stand up for your rights? Where's your spine? Where's your courage? Where's your backbone? Sorry, madam, but a boxer forever yours for your noble tie. <laughs> See, fellas, she thinks I'm a weakling, but I'm really Superman. I can even get bread. <laughs> but I'm really not a weakling, Lois. I just don't care about girls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, please, Clark, put that ferret back in your pocket and listen to me. <laughs> are you a man or are you a mouse? Put out the studio cat and I'll tell you. <laughs> Lois, don't put me off any longer. Go out with me tonight. I'm busy. Tomorrow night. I'm busy. The next night. I'm busy. Busy, busy, busy. What are you, a girl or a party line? <laughs> Lois, I'm going to prove to you once and for all that I'm a man. You are? Yes, look at this. My birth certificate. About <laughs> <laughs> uh, six o'clock. Time for my vitamins. Mmm. <laughs> Here, I'll mm. open the box for you. <laughs> well, what are all those pills? Well, this one's for calcium. <laughs> this one's for podium. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for iron. Well, what's this one for? That's for me. <laughs> Fourth one always pays off. Oh, Clark, you weakling. Listen, Lois, stop belittling me. What's wrong with my shoulders, my chest, my biceps? Nothing, Clark, nothing. But you keep leaving them in your other suit. <laughs> hey. Let's let him come in again. Hey, just got a tip on the big news story. What do you got, a secret tunnel there? What is that? <laughs> What'd you say, Chief? <laughs> I said I just got a big tip on a news story. Well, I'm ready to go, Chief. No grass will grow under me. This telegram says it'll break any minute. No grass under me. It'll take... <laughs> it'll take courage. Can you make it, Miss Lane? <laughs> While she's gone, I'll pluck out those dandelions. <laughs> Can't get over that guy hitting the jackpot so early. Chief. Chief, why not send me? Can you cut this thing all right, huh? <laughs> Chief, why not send me? You still mad at me? Can't I fire you if I didn't get such a kick out of filing papers on your nose? <laughs> You're not too secure, you know. <laughs> Well, if you must, you can go along with her. You can hold her pencil. Gee, thanks. No doubt on the way you'll get yourself in trouble. You'll probably get killed. Gosh, Chief, thanks for the chance. <laughs> Let's go. Here's a cab. Let's get in. This is a big story. I'll bet... What? I hope we get there in time. I can't hear you, Clark. You may get a scoop. For goodness sake, Clark, stop running alongside the cab and get in. <laughs> I'll pay the fare. Where to, mister? Straight ahead. I think we ought to turn left. Straight ahead. Yeah, but if... Never mind, straight ahead. Okay. Okay, take a left. <laughs> oh, Clark, look. Look up on that building on the ledge of the 82nd floor. There's a man starting to jump. He changed his mind. <laughs> Clark, you've got to do something. I am. I'm quivering the best I can. 
Oh, but that man must be rescued. Oh, if Superman were only here. And she's right. This is a job for Superman. I'll do the job so fast you'll never notice I'm missing. Here's the building. I'll duck into this room and change into my Superman clothes. Okay, I'll try another room. Now I am Superman. Now to the 82nd floor. Up, up and away. Oh, darn. Forgot to open the window. There we go. Well, what do you want, Fancy Pants? Don't jump, mister. Think of your wife. Got no wife. Well, think of your kids. Got no kids. Well, think of Paramount. Which Paramount? Okay, jump, you MGM spy. You... <laughs> Say, uh, who are you anyway? Everybody knows me. I'm brave and fearless. I'm the champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of the underdog, and enemy of the underworld. Oh, I know you. I've heard your program. You have? Yeah, you're Mr. District Attorney. <laughs> no, I'm Superman, and I'm here to save you. I'll take you off this ledge. But I've got to jump. You're here? I'm disgraced. I've done a terrible thing. A terrible thing. What'd you do? I put bananas in the refrigerator. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. Alas, he jumped. Mercy's sakes. I must dive down and rescue him before he hits the ground. <coughs> oh, brother. Get away from that window, you bees. <laughs> oh, well, back to work. <coughs> gotcha. <coughs> I'm such a butterfingers. <laughs> oh, well, I'll catch him on the first bounce. Now I've got you. You're safe on the ground, thanks to me. Am I not wonderful? Yes. Hey, where are you going? Back to the ledge, and next time, mind your own business, you pet. <laughs> well, now to change clothes and get back to the cab before Lois notices I'm missing. After all, I've been gone two seconds already. Clark, did you see Superman rescue that man? I couldn't look. I closed my eyes. Oh, Clark, if only you were Superman. <laughs> Little does she know that I am me. <laughs> okay, driver, step on it. We got to cover that story. As the cab speeds to its destination, our scene shifts to a spot in the Hollywood Hills where we look in on a couple who will bear watching. Fresh. <laughs> Yes, that pair doesn't want to be watched. So we move farther up the hills where we look in on the workshop of the two mad scientists, Dr. Bettini and his assistant, Atho. What awful thing is being hatched in this... <laughs> what awful thing is being hatched in this closely guarded hideaway? All right. Scalpel. Scalpel. <laughs> Alcohol. Alcohol. Sponge. Sponge. Alcohol. Alcohol. Suture. Suture. Alcohol. <laughs> That's enough alcohol. Is the experiment succeeding? Gee, it's moving. It has life. It is breathing. All right. That's all. You can get off the egg now. Oh, thanks, Chief. Now can I rest? It's so tiring sitting over a hot egg all day. So, you have been working hard. So I'm going to double your weekly allowance. Gee, you are? Yes. This week you get two pints of blood. Oh, but oh boy, you are smart. You have a head on you, shoulders. Oh, oh, get it off! <laughs> Oh, I... Pardon me, I, I see what you mean. Oh. Now we have to check the formula for our new machine. Oh, yes. Uh, well, gee, I'm so nervous. How does it go again? Uh, X plus Y oh, equals three times the tangent of oh, Z oh, if O is nine corpuscles. Uh, 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 I must have absolute wife to figure this out. Now let's see. <laughs> oh, those noisy king sister upstairs. I can't concentrate. Ah, 
you know what we can do with those girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. What can we do with it? You know, they look awful strong. I've got it. We will use them to test our new machine. Oh, mercy, yes. The machine. As soon as they start singing again, we will sneak upstairs and corner them. Okay. You king sisters, you. We've got you. Well, come on, Marilyn. Oh. <laughs> I've got you in my power. And I'm cruel and wicked. I will do horrible things for you. You will suffer. Suffer! Suffer! Oh! <laughs> What are you screaming for? Gee, you scare me, too. Golly, the King Sisters may be facing a fate worse than death. However, we have a request from overseas asking us to return to Clark Kent and Lois Lane in the speeding taxi cab. Since your wish is our command... Ah, oh, shame on you. Always getting fresh. I'm sorry. Yeah, you had to get fresh. I'm really sorry. You really are? Okay, driver, let him back in. He won't tickle your ears again. <laughs> oh. Clark, if you were only a gentleman like Superman. Superman, Superman. I ought to tell her I'm Superman with a piercing vision, the x-ray eyes, a super sensitive hearing. Oh, Clark, will you pay the fare? Huh? <laughs> What was that? I got the meat of stuff right here in my hand. Where? Listen, it's two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, I mean, hey? He wins. He wins, driver. I'll pay. Clark's liable to fumble around all day for the money. I am not. I'll give the money to him quick as a flash. There. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Well, Lois, wasn't I quick at a handing in the dough? Well, I'll say it isn't every man is that good at finding things in a woman's purse. <laughs> While Clark Kent, who is really Superman, and Lois Lane, who is really Paulette Goddard, feed back to the Daily Planet, which is really a crummy paper, let us see how the King Sisters are coming along with the two mad scientists. Let us throw the King Sisters into the soap machine. Oh, yes. King Sisters, forward! March! Hey, Alice, bring up the rear. I can't. I'm not built that way. <laughs> oh, dear, in. <laughs> now, stop the machine. These girls will make four wonderful bars of soap. Think we can get 16 cakes out of each bar of soap? No, they are still the King Sisters. No matter how you slice them, you will only get eight to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, just think. Next time they sing, it'll be soap operas. Yes, yes. Well, isn't that enough? Now, stop the machine, and we'll examine the product. The bars of soap are coming out. <laughs> Look at those huge soap bars. Yeah, king size. <laughs> now we know the machine works. And we shall get the master ingredient that will make our soap the best in the world. You mean? Yes, I mean Superman. He's the only man who contains lanolin. <laughs> now we switch back to Clark Kent and Lois Lane Who are snooping around the mad scientist's house In an effort to find out what happened to the King sisters 
How did they know what happened to the King sisters? They peeked. We must be near the Palladium. You're not afraid, are you, Clark? Afraid? Fear is a stranger to me. Sounds like my sponsor. Clark, you are scared. Your nose is like chalk. I know. I've got to stop writing things in the sidewalk with it. Well, so long, Lois. I've got an appointment with my barber. At midnight? Lady barber. <laughs> oh, well, I'll have to go in alone. I'll ring the doorbell. <laughs> the door's opening. Hello, I'm Tarzan of the Apes. <laughs> but this is Superman. You're in the wrong comic strip. What are you doing here? Oh, just looking for some apes. <laughs> <laughs> me alone in this dreadful house. Well, good, evening. good evening. Hello. I'm Lois Lane of the planet. You may interview us in my private office. My, what a charming house. You like it? This house was, has stood uh, for 300 years. I moved in the day it was built. Not a stone has been touched. Nothing altered. Nothing repaired or replaced. My, you must have the same landlord I have. Just a minute. <laughs> Miss Lane, now that you know all about my soap machine, you must die. But I don't know anything about your soap machine. I just told you. <laughs> so you have to die. Yeah, isn't it wonderful how he can find excuses for killing people? We'll throw her in right now. Grab her, doctor. Oh! What's there? Sorry. <laughs> Unhand that woman at his eyes, Superman. Just in time for another thrilling rescue. I am here in the neck of time. You mean Nick? Neck. Nick. Get these guys out of the room and I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> Superman! At last we have you where we want you. We are going to make soap out of you. Yeah, we can break you in half. Use half of you in the tub, half in the kitchen for dishes and light laundry. <laughs> I do hope I'll be kind to Wendy's. <laughs> you fiends are mad. You can't kill me. I'm indestructible. Go ahead. Try to kill me. Go on. I double dare you. All right. I'll use the machine gun. <laughs> yeah, it only tickles. All right. Give him the axe. <laughs> only tickles. Hand <laughs> <And> grenade! <laughs> Only tickles. Ouch! Oh, what happened? Lois, you're standing on my corn. Shame on you, Superman, the man of steel. Well, a guy can rust. <laughs> Enough of this. Superman, are you ready to get into the machine? All right, you fools. I will show you the folly of your ways. I will step into your ridiculous machine. Superman, Superman, lots more such with Superman. Long, all I can see is the soap and super deep. Hey, what's happening at all? What's happening? Good gracious, he's turning the machine into soap. Then our experiment is a failure. That is Nothing left to do but die. Goodbye, cruel world. So long, Pop. Hey, you are coming home. <laughs> ah, the forces of justice have once more triumphed over those of evil. Oh, Superman, kiss me. But I'm Superman. I don't waste time with girls. This is the hardest part I ever played. <laughs> Superman, 
Harper, man, you kiss me. Ah, but I may destroy you with one embrace. I'll chance it. Come into my manly arms. Oh, my, he disintegrated quickly. <laughs> This program is arranged with the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.